handling objections. Who handles objections? Who deals with any objections? I don't get any objections because I don't sell. I don't sell anything I help people buy. That's a key understanding of the role of what we do. We are not salespeople. We are facilitating the sales process. Salespeople sell things. We help people make wise decisions. We don't sell anything. If we go at it from that, obje- uh, from that perspective, you don't get objections because I'm helping you. I'm not selling you anything. I'm helping you. I never get objections. But if you do, here's my strategy for handling objections. See, I don't like that phrase, handling objections. It's very confrontational. I call it arguing with elegance. You see, handling objections should be about arguing with elegance and style. How do you argue with elegance and style is a three-step process. The first step is to acknowledge that there is an objection. Recognize that there is an objection. The second step is to agree with the objection. So the first step is to acknowledge. Next step is to agree. And then the third step is to creatively question. Find some words where you can take back what the question was, the objection, and give it back in an unusual creative way. Does that make sense? Okay, so remember always, when you get an objection, remember this, what we just talked about, acknowledge, agree, question creatively. Let's give you an example. Has anyone ever said to you, I don't believe in insurance? So my response to that would be to acknowledge it by saying, I can understand that. I agree with you. Many people don't believe in insurance. But let me ask you a question. If life assurance was free, how much would you have? A little or a lot? And he says, well, if it was free, I'd have a lot. Ah, so it's not that you don't believe in insurance. You just don't believe in paying for insurance. (laughs) So we then just have to find a different way of showing how that premium could operate. So someone else talked earlier on about using unusual language for premium. I don't call it a premium. I call it a servicing fee. That's what it is, isn't it? It services the policy. It's not a premium. Premium has this horrible word. It's of a cost. A servicing fee? I'm getting something and there's a cost to maintaining it. Mohan stole this one from me earlier. He does that kind of thing. (laughs) Have you ever had anyone say to you, God will take care of me? I say to him, I agree with you. Of course he does. Of course he'll take care of you. Guess who arranged for me to be here today? Ever had a client say to you, I'll think about it? Yeah? Get it all the time. I say to him, of course you need to think about it. Acknowledge. Agree. Everyone needs to think about it. It's a big decision. But let me know. Let me know the answer to this. Do you have the date of your death written in your diary? Because if you do, I'll see you the week before and we'll start it then. But if you don't, when is going to be the right time? You see, the only people that come to me to buy life insurance is somebody who's just had a heart attack. It's funny that. He's just had a heart attack, and he then wants to buy life insurance. And I say to him, well, why didn't you see me before you had a heart attack? And he says, I didn't know I was going to have a heart attack. That could be you, because nobody knows if you're going to have a heart attack or have cancer. And if you don't have the date of death in your diary, there is nothing for you to think about. You already know you need this. Let's just do it. Let's icy. Is that what it's called? Let's do the icy. Elsie. Icy. All right. Power of words that you don't understand. It's a passport. Okay, great. Good. Right. Another one about, let, he says, let me think about it. I say, of course you need to think about it. I could understand that. But you do know you need this now. He says, yeah, but I need to think. Well, if you had a leak in your roof, and you have a leak in your finances to protect your family right now, would you fix the roof when the sun is shining or when it starts raining? When it's shining. The sun is shining right now because you will qualify for the policy. One day you may be too late, and then it will be raining, and we can't fix the roof. Now is the time. Now this is an idea not to be used as your first idea, or your second, or your third. This is the idea you use when everything else has failed. Everything, and I mean every idea, every strategy, everything that you can think of doing to close a sale is just not happening, then you use this one. So the husband doesn't want to buy any insurance. Just point blank refuses. He doesn't care about his family, doesn't want it. So I get an envelope, and I write the address of his wife on the front of the envelope, 
I seal the envelope, and on the back of the envelope, I write, the contents of this envelope relate to your husband's life insurance. Please call me upon receipt. And I put my name and phone number. The wife gets the envelope in the post, opens it. Nothing inside. She calls me. She says, you sent me this envelope about my husband's life insurance. There's nothing inside. I said, I know, because your husband refuses to buy life insurance. And when he dies, I'm going to send you another one. I just wanted you to get used to it. <laughs> I told you this is not your first one to use, because what will happen now is when the husband gets home, he's going to have the biggest argument of his life. We know it, okay? And the result is that he is going to buy a policy. He's just not going to buy it from me. <laughs> but that's okay. I've done some charity work for another agent somewhere. That's how I view it. Because I wasn't going to do the business anyway. Last resorts. This is not a good idea, is what I'm getting at. It's really important. I can see people writing it down. Do not do that. When Leonardo da Vinci painted the Mona Lisa... At the time that he painted it, it was just a blank canvas and some oil paint splashed on that canvas. And at the time that he created it, the value of it was just the canvas and the paint sitting on the canvas. But over time, the Mona Lisa has become the most valuable work of art in the world. And yet it is still only canvas with paint. What is it that created such value in just that simple object? It's time. Think about that just for a moment. When we sell or write a life assurance policy, at the time that we arrange it, it is just a piece of paper with a drop of ink and a promise to pay enshrined in that ink. The value of it at that time is no more than just the paper and the ink that's been dropped on it. Agreed? But we know that one day, given time, that piece of paper and ink will become worth an absolute fortune to the family. So when somebody says to me, what do you do? I might say, I'm a financial artist. And what I do for my clients is create financial masterpieces, which they don't necessarily value today, but I can tell you their family will appreciate as priceless. How many financial masterpieces do you own? Perhaps we ought to look at what you think is going to be a masterpiece. Nice answer? Yes. Easy. Just think about what you say. I know advisors around the world that have closed a sale on this idea and made thousands of dollars on this idea, and they were struggling to close the client. But when they used it, the client said, why didn't you put it to me like that before? Now I get it, that it isn't about what I'm doing today. It's about what the masterpiece will be in the future. Some of you kindly have purchased my book called Smashing the Glass Ceiling. It's a motivational book. It helps people to get qualified for MDRT, more importantly, it gets them to the top of the table. And I can name people that have used the ideas that I have that have gone from MDRT qualifier to TOT in one year. If you want to email me, this is my email address, bupinda at anandassociates.com. If you want to get the script, uh, I'd be happy to send it to you. Through the power of words, I want you to think really, really carefully next time you're communicating with your clients. The, what are the words you're using? What is the influence of those words to create the reaction that you want to deliver the response that you're after to create the results you desire. Think really, really carefully about those things.